Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. I apologize for the wind noise, you know who this is, what I'm going to ask you to press and why. Uh, so, getting to this, I had a talk yesterday uh, with my wife about really not really my channel and she doesn't know the name of the channel she hasn't heard it she doesn't know everything I discuss on the channel she just knows that I have a channel somewhere and uh, she doesn't know if it's YouTube or something else but she knows I've got one somewhere and she knows that I discuss community issues and Islam and she asked me uh, why I don't invite white folks to Islam now this is going to factor in to the whole community, to be honest with you. So this isn't even only about religion. This gets into community issues. So bear, here, bear with me and hear this out. Um, in having this discussion with her, I told her, well, first off, I never excluded them. I never did. But what I'm doing is I'm talking to the community that needs to hear it. And the community, um, I'm, I'm dealing with the sick first, and our people are sick. And I'm not sitting up here offering a medicine, even though everyone may need it, I'm not offering a medicine to the oppressors first. And she didn't say, she said to me clearly, I don't want you to prioritize the oppressors. I just don't want you to exclude anybody based on race because no one chooses race. Then we agreed. But eventually, after listening to her, I had to go ahead and tell her, listen, first off, you can't interrupt me when I'm answering your question. And secondly, you don't ask black people to ever not leave white folks out because we can't leave them out. We've never been able to. Do you think we can plan something that's good for us and leave them out of knowing about the plans? They always find out about it. You think that we could have a Greenville, uh, Oklahoma, next to tool saw and leave them out of knowing about its existence? No, we couldn't. Every time we do something or we build something, they find out about it. So there's no leaving them out. It's just I'm not prioritizing them because they're not a community that deserves it. And she said to me, well, you can't generalize. And I stopped her and I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. We already established. I listened to you. Even when you told me all this stuff, I already know I let you finish. Now you let me finish. I have to generalize, even though I will say this is a generalization. I have to do that too, but I have to generalize because everyone has to, everyone's got to generalize. If you don't want to take a vacation to me, I mean a vacation to South Africa with me because of xenophobic attacks in two neighborhoods in Johannesburg, you're generalizing. Now you're doing it for your safety. You're not doing it because you blame everybody, but you're doing it for your safety. You got to do it. If you don't want to take a vacation with me to, let's say, Ethiopia, because your people in Ethiopians got a problem, okay, fair, you're generalizing. That's what's going on. You can't tell, you can't do that and tell me to not do it. But the thing is this. To a certain extent, she failed to understand, and there's a good and a bad reason for it. Now, the bad reason, we've, we've, um, she understands what that is now, and she's decided, no, no, she took correction on that. She decided, I'm not going to repeat that mistake again. She accepted the correction, and that's what makes a good person a good person. That's more than I can say for a lot of these better ones I'm out here teaching. But it goes beyond this, too, though. She, um, there was a good reason. And that good reason is she does not fully understand what has been done to us. And she shouldn't have to fully understand it. To a certain extent, that's good because it means that there's a level of trauma we have that she does not have. That's the good thing. Brothers, when you go abroad, you are going to find what it's like to deal with women that are not traumatized. Or at least not terribly traumatized. Now the African American woman is traumatized. But you see the African Brazilian woman is traumatized. The African Costa Rican woman may be less traumatized but still traumatized. 
The African Caribbean women can be traumatized. <laughs> women in the continent, especially in the Congo, especially if they heard their grandmothers and grandfathers' stories, uh, they can be traumatized. We are a traumatized race, not just nationality, but race. However, the trauma is more severe in African American women, at least, uh, in this, at least the manifestations of the trauma in PTSS are more severe. Because their trauma spills out onto us. We're not allowed to take our traumas out on them, although they're men who do. And when they do, they are called out for it. Movies are made about them even before they start to exist, these men. When they take their trauma out on us, it's just trauma. We're supposed to deal with it. And love the strong black woman because of the trauma she's been through. And we do love them. Most of us do. I don't advocate not marrying African American women because I don't love black women. I love black women black and that's all nationalities i advocate uh going abroad because you can find black women who may have been through trauma and they don't spill it out over onto you however however another thing i had to tell my wife i had explained to her when they came to do what they did to your people you all fought you resisted they colonized you but you resisted y'all always had that when they took us away from you, there was no uh, way that we could always resist in so organized a fashion to the point that we were ever going to be able to become independent of them. And both of our people are traumatized and fighting each other over dumb stuff. Whose fault is that in common? The fault, the civilization that is at fault for your people having a, a tribal warfare, <sighs> Is this, and, and the reason why, you, why your parents had to leave uh, the home country and you were born abroad and have never been back in your entire life is, this, is the same civilization that is at fault for why I never saw African soil until after you and I had met. And when I say African soil, I've been to North Africa before I met her. But I don't count that. And the civilization that is at fault for the brainwashing of people in North Africa is also the same civilization. And I had to stop and tell her, if I go and I rob somebody from that civilization at an ATM right now, what's so immoral about it? It's stupid. It's tactically stupid. But what is immoral about me going and robbing somebody from that civilization if they got it at an ATM and taking their stuff and enjoying it? I mean, what's morally wrong with it? Isn't that what they did? They just didn't do it at an ATM because there weren't ATMs available at that time. If it's okay for a Palestinian to do this to an Israeli because the Israelis deserve it, it's okay for me to not single out the white community uh, and invite them into our religion because what they deserve is actually retribution. And their community is not fertile soil for, inviting, uh, uh, for any invitation to anything that is morally life-changing and reforming. It doesn't mean that individuals can't come. They do. We know them. We work with them. <laughs> but how rare are they? Yeah, we have some uh, white Westerners here where I work and that are Muslim, and they are 200% Muslim. Why so? Because their community treats them like traitors, so they know they're at odds with other white folks right off the bat. This is understood. They are at odds with other white folks as soon as it gets started. As soon as, they, as soon as it's discovered that this is a white person who's also Muslim. And if you don't believe me, you can ask someone who's both white and Muslim, whether they're Eastern European living in a Western country and practicing Islam, or whether they're Western Europeans who accepted Islam and are practicing Islam. Many of them have to hide it. They are treated harshly. But I don't have to go and single them out for this invitation. They got some of their own people that might decide to do that. And the fact that their own people usually don't put up any platforms calling the rest of their folks to Islam tells you something. Now, why do I mention this? And what does this have to do with the community? It's the trauma. That's what it has to do with it. You are dealing with a uniquely hostile woman when you deal with most of the African-American women and really when you deal with most of the Western women, period. Even white Western, especially the white Western woman. You're dealing with a unique form of hostility. I don't know how much of it is nat nature, how much of it is nurture. I know it's some combination, but that's what you're dealing with. <sighs> you're dealing with that and pretty much only that. They'll treat you with hostility. They want to treat you like a utility. 
And when you decide you want a better deal and you go where there's still off, still better deals being offered, whether you're committing and marrying or whether you're paying to play or anything in between, they start saying, well, you can't handle us. The F you mean handle. And don't get it twisted. You can go into Mexico and you can find women that will actually, uh, you know, if you do your part, they will do theirs. But you can also go there or you can go into Mexican communities in the U.S. and you will find women that have that same attitude. You can't handle me. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. Handle. Who the hell told the Western woman that you have to handle them like there's some kind of uh, uh, machine? Or like there's some kind of wild animal that's going to rip you up if you're not separated by iron bars. Who the hell gave them this idea that that's what they're supposed to do, especially if you're a nice guy? It wasn't you. Men didn't sit up here. There's no reason that there's no interest in men would have in something like this. None at all. I'm not dealing with a woman that has that kind of trauma. I'm married to a woman that has less trauma and her people will colonize and they will co and, and after colonization they were still pitted against each other in these wars. Hence she was born abroad and has never been back to the country of her parents' origin. Of her origin. <laughs> she ain't seen it yet. Hence when I do go back to the continent, I'm going to have to travel alone until her country settles down. Because if she goes back to the continent at all and her relatives find out that she didn't go back to specifically that country, they're going to question as to why, com conveniently forgetting that things settle and then unsettle, settle and unsettle. That the, right now the country's in a flux. It's improving, but it ain't where it needs to be yet. And there's another thing too. In that country, let me tell you one of the things that's going on. So that you black folks don't think that we African Americans are the only people in the world that got some of the problems we got. Let me tell you one thing that happens in her country. Because the government was pretty much uh, weakened in the chaos, you've got people that are supposedly doctors, but they don't actually have degrees because there's no oversight. They don't have real degrees, I'll put it like that. you got people that are doing various skills and profession, or very, they're performing various professions, and they, there's not enough oversight to stop the fakes. All they got to do is be good enough at what they're doing to not be uh, discovered as a fake, and they can do it. So now you've got people returning home from that nation's diaspora, and they have real qualifications, true qualifications. And sometimes when they go back, especially if they have relatives that are also still back there, these relatives will get a visit and they will be told, your niece needs to leave or we're going to kill her. Maybe even you too. She's bad for business. What that really means is since your niece is actually a dentist and people in this town uh, do have jacked up teeth, she's making us look bad because she's actually taking care of their teeth and, and that makes us have to work harder. So she bad for business because she a real dentist and we fakes. Just as an example, that's really what goes on. So you understand that we're not the only ones that got the problems we got. I want you all to realize that sometimes you're going to have to deal with women that don't understand exactly what you're dealing with. But that can be a good and a bad thing. But I also want us to understand and realize that They've been through other traumas, and the difference is they're not taking them out on us. If this had been an African-American woman, she would ask me the same thing. I would have never got a word in edgewise, and it would have been a knockdown, drag-out argument. Probably would have been a reason we split up. Not because she had a different opinion, but because when I said, wait, wait, hold up. Now, I listened to you, and I heard you out, now hear me out. That, that by itself would not have gone over well. Because we already know what a Western woman, and let's not single out the black Western woman. This is a Western woman phenomenon. We already know what a Western woman, you can tell a Western woman, hold up, hold on, I heard you out, and she's not going to fuck the shuck up and let you finish what you're saying. Even though she doesn't want you interrupting her. And the more wrong she is, the more she's going to interrupt you and not let you interrupt her. And it's not only her that does it. The white man in general is like that. The Western European white folks are. The Arab Bedouin is like that. The more wrong they are, the less they let you even tell them. Because they're stubborn. But you thought it was only you. But the thing is, 
You can find good and bad everywhere, but boy, let's be honest. When you step out, brothers, you know what I'm talking about. When you step out, you realize that you have a higher chance of finding the good. Because you don't just find, I'm going to tell you a secret about this. You don't just find the good and the bad in every community. You can find the good and the bad in most of the individuals. But we are in a community that has told the individual women to bring their worst to us and bring their best to someone else. Especially if it's a guy that doesn't deserve it. And this is one of the reasons that Obsidian was so correct about the phenomena he just uh, posted a video about less than a day ago. And what was that? There is no um, nice guy propaganda in the black community. That opened my eyes to something. See, Ron, he, he had a point. He had Ron Will's corner when it comes to that. Ain't no nice guy propaganda. And then what is this so-called nice guy? There are guys that, that say they're nice and they're not really nice. But what does that mean? The misdefinition of nice guy is not a valid excuse for what the Obsidian rightly called atavistic mating tendencies. He was right about that. You got guys that say they're nice and they're not. Yeah, but I mean, you got women that say they're 34 uh, and they're 44. So I mean, what is that about? You got women that say they got, you know, double D's. They pull everything off. They didn't even get surgery. They just outright got pads under their shirt. They don't have double D's. You got women like that. You got women that say, this is my butt naturally and, and it's surgery. So I mean, what, what, is, what does it mean that you got guys that say they're nice or actually think they're nice, but they're not? Actually think they're nice because we men are more deceived by women than women are by us. What does this tell you? We're dealing with a community that has told the women, if you are the least bit visually attractive, you give your best to the worst man and you give your worst to the better man that's what it is and the better man should be unattractive to you because good and bad good is bad and bad is good that's what we're dealing with when you step out brothers whether you stay in the same race or not you step out and you don't have to deal with that idea anymore does it have to be some kind of appeal? Yes, but that's a very individual thing. In our case, a, woman, a black woman's definition of sex appeal, not only is it never worded in a clear way that we could all understand, but it actually is the same thing for all of them. They just can't explain it in words or they won't explain it, but they all want the same thing. They have the exact same sexual preferences. It's, it's, that's, that's what it boils down to, and it's atavistic. And even what I said just now was a generalizing statement. There are women that don't have it. But let's call it what the hell it is. The society is like that. That's the predominant view in the society. And women who don't have the same view as other women get shamed by other women as being a pick-me. That's real. And that's the truth of the matter. And let me tell you one last thing before I go. I want to tell you old niggas something right quick. A lot of you old niggas that do take care of your kids and do take care of your wives. And you're the, and you're the sole breadwinner of your families. Um, you got my respect for taking the responsibility that you've taken on and doing it right. A lot of you don't want to be uh, put up on a pedestal because you did that. Because when you're doing it, you're just doing what a man's supposed to do. You still got my respect for doing it. I'm not putting you on a pedestal. I'm just uh, uh, paying the respect that's due. But what I want you old niggas to understand is that if you haven't had to search for a job in decades in this economy and you're retired or you're about to retire and you've never been fired or laid off, then you fuck the shuck up about what young brothers don't have. You need to learn the same thing I have to tell a lot of African-American women. Start blaming the white man and stop blaming us. We take credit for things we actually did wrong. I mean, we actually did right. And most of us take blame for things we actually did wrong. Black folks are really good about that to the point we'll take blame for things not even in our control. But you, man, some of you old niggas, you suck because you won't blame the white man when they actually did something wrong. And this economy was never something we controlled. You think I'd be living thousands of miles away from where my kids are if the economy was good? I got spiritual and religious reasons for leaving as well. But I probably would have never learned about those reasons in the first place if the economy had been what it was when I was in high school. If the economy now was just what it was when I was going through high school, I probably would have never found out or I probably would have been in the U.S. for a longer period of time and then out of it for a longer period of time by now with more savings than what I got. But no, that's not what happened. Everything changed. The rug got yanked out from under our feet. And most of us didn't even know that it happened until after the fact. 
My field of study in college was lucrative when I went in and it was worthless when I came out. The Career Placement Center never told us this was going on. We didn't know about the transition. We just graduated. All of a sudden, the, the degree was so worthless. The skill was so worthless that people felt we should pay them for the internships. I shit you not. And you old niggas were the main ones talking about where you young folks don't like to work. Man, fuck you. And I meant that from the bottom of my black heart. You say some shit like that. Fuck you. May Allah curse you for that. Because you stupid ass niggas haven't had to look for jobs in decades. And you got the nerve to sit up here and say that we don't want to work. When in fact, we just don't want to work hard to still be poor. Which is exactly what the fuck our grandparents and parents, namely you old ass niggas, were marching for. So that we don't have to work so goddamn hard to still be so fucking poor. But you stupid ass niggas. Because your elders talked bad about you, talked about you like dogs who had tails. You think that that's just a good custom to uphold. So you start talking about all the other young folks like we got tails instead of failing, instead of understanding that we're just as different individually as you ignorant ass niggas are. So for those of you who took positions of responsibility, believe me when I tell you I appreciate y'all doing that. And I will put you on a pedestal for that because it was more difficult to do than it was for some damn cracker who was eating your half of the pie anyway. But I'm also going to go ahead and say it. You ignorant ass niggas that got the nerve to sit up here and act like the economy is just fucking fine like it was when you were coming up. I wish your own elders were around to slap the shit out you now because what we're going through in the job market is similar to what they had to go through. You niggas just got through and a lot of you didn't even remain going through. Because if you remember the 70s and the 80s when educated Negroes were finally being led into corporate America to get some bigger and nicer salaries, what did a lot of them niggas do? A lot of, and you remember this, a lot of them niggas, they blew the money because they never seen that much money in, 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 li in their lives. So a lot of them took this, they had these corporate expense accounts and they were given these corporate expense accounts in the hopes that they would be weak. And those who were weak and corrupted and misspent the company's money were terminated for it and wound up back on them damn streets or having to live off somebody. You remember when this happened. Now, if you stayed employed, obviously you were one of those that didn't do this or you didn't get caught. So you didn't get weeded out. But you know this phenomena happened. I was a kid when this was going on. I still know about the phenomena. I still know about it to this day. And my own mother told me about something that her friend did. A close friend of my mother's. She was divorced from my father's close friend by this point. She got a boyfriend that was one of them dudes. He was spending all kind of money, even on her. Why was he spending it? Mostly to impress women. And when he got with this lady, he spent it to impress her. But he lost his job, and uh, my mother knew that he lost the job because he was misspending the company's money from the corporate expense account. Uh, but the, the girlfriend wasn't quite sure what was going on. However, he was staying with her, and she was like, okay, he doesn't have a job now. He's at home. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the house up for sale. And uh, I'm going to leave the house. I'm going to do that. And, I'm, and she got someone to act like the landlord. And just come in and evict them all. But she had a place to go to and he didn't. And that's how they split. Imagine that. Now he was spending. It was all good. He lost that job, which, of course, was, was uh, set up anyway, and it was bound to happen, and he walked his ignorant ass right into it. But when he lost that job, boy, that's when, that's when she said, okay, I'm going to work through all of this so that we both get supposedly evicted, but really I'm putting a house up for sale, and, um, and I'm going to get rid of him. Now, this was going on back then, and you old niggas know this was happening. So I want you old niggas to stop talking like young black folks just outright don't want to work young black folks are just like a lot of older black folks we come in all we come with all kinds of work ethics the lax the strict and the in-between i'm in between i'll work but you get you better pay me it better be worth it but hey i work and i do my job damn good now because i got all this experience doing it but you ignorant ass old niggas got the nerve to sit here and start talking about how we just don't want to work we just don't want to work. That's it. We just don't want to work. No, nigga, we don't want to work hard and have nothing to show for it. There's a word for that. Starts with an S. 
And it's one of the worst things that happened to us since we got stripped away from home and drugged to the shores of, of the Americas, North and South and the Caribbean islands. And this was such a problem that even where I live now, miles away from where you are, they still call us slaves and they don't even mean any harm when they do it. They don't call any other race slaves and they don't call us slaves based on nationality. They call you a slave if you are black, end of story, fuck your nationality, fuck how much money you have. They call you obd, even if they don't hate you because of slavery. And you want us to accept that, we, that maybe that's just the best we can get in the job market. Nigga, fuck you. Go tell them young ass white kids who don't want to work that they should get out there and pay to search for a job. And then take the lowest paying job with the longest hours and the worst conditions and be happy with that shit. You don't tell this to these young white kids. Stupid ass niggas. I just got through giving you credit for what you did and cussing you the fuck out for what you did wrong. And I'm saying this as a man that's old myself. You're fucked up. May God forgive me for my foul language, but you niggas deserved it. I hope that what I've said one day will not be true anymore, and until then I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Blackheart signing blackout. Assalamu alaikum.